Hello friends, welcome to X Amitian Smriti Notes for Biotechnology. In today's lecture, we will study about graphs, measure of central tendency and measure of dispersion. So let's start with graphs and its various types. So let's start with bar graph. In bar graph, we represent the data in the bars and it is useful in comparing. The bar graph consists of number of equally spaced rectangular area with equal width. It, the bar graph can be horizontal or vertical. Next is pie chart. This is a circular graph whose area is subdivided into sectors by radii such that the area of the sector is directly proportional to the angle at the center. Next is histogram. It is a set of rectangles drawn on horizontal line that is the x-axis and frequency is marked on the vertical line. The width of the class is multiplied with the frequency density. Next is O give or we can also say as cumulative frequency. When we plot it against the corresponding class boundaries and successive points are joined by the straight lines. It is basically the correlation between the x and y and this makes a cluster of dots that make the shape. I have shown in the graph with an example that shows the formation of straight line. Cumulative frequency can be used to find the, the median and the quartiles. We can also find out the number of observations which are expected to lie between two given values. Next is scatter plot. That means it is scattered all around. This is used to show a relationship between two variables and the symbol is usually a dot. It is simple and easy to understand. And the last type of graph is dendrogram. That means it is a type of tree diagram which we also use in biology to study the blood relations and all. It shows the relationship between two sets of data. Now let us look at the measure of central tendency which is measured by three things that is mean, median and mode. So let's start with mean. Mean is basically the calculated average. That means the, all the ad terms involved are calculated for mean. We add up all the atoms upon the number of atom and we only get one mean. Next is median. For finding out medium, we are supposed to arrange the data in first either ascending or descending order and we get only one median and the formula for finding median is n plus 1 by 2. It is the positional average. Mode is basically the number that occurs maximum number of times. We can have one or more than one mode. Next is measure of dispersion which can be measured by range, mean deviation, quartile deviation, variance, covariance and combined mean. So let's start with range. Range is basically the difference between the maximum and the minimum value. Next is quartile deviation. The value dividing an array into two equal parts and the dividing point is called the median that is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile upon 2. I have also mentioned the basic formulas for each term you can use them. Next is mean deviation. It is the deviation of various items from the measure of central tendency. The average is computed of the given data and then the difference between value of each item and the average is taken. The arithmetic mean of these deviation is the mean deviation. Next is standard deviation. It is the square root of the arithmetic mean of square deviations of various items. The mean of square deviation is called variance. Standard deviation is denoted by the symbol sigma and its formula is the square root of the variance. Now what is variance? Variance is the average of the squared differences from the mean. Like for example, if we are supposed to find the height of 10 students, then we first calculate the mean. And then to calculate the variance, we take each difference between two units, square it and then average the result. And for standard deviation, we just square root the variance. 
to avoid the confusion between mean deviation and standard deviation i have written the difference between them mean deviation basically means taking out the average of all the given data whereas standard deviation is calculated only from the mean now let's look into the center limit theorem it states that the sampling distribution of the sample means approaches a normal distribution as sample size size gets larger no matter what the shape of population distribution the average of your sample mean will be the population mean we can calculate the z score by by using the number of standard deviation from the mean of a data at a point for example when we measure person's weight it is com- it is compared to average population mean weight for the theory part of biostats the notes which i have made are very sufficient for you to study and if you don't understand anything i have mentioned some links in the description box you can use them as well or just comment down and let me know and do not forget to like share and subscribe thank you